Steve Levitan, nine-time Emmy winner and the creator of the Hulu comedy reboot, a meta backstage show about Hulu rebooting a fictional 90s sitcom. Steve, you've been wildly successful in the television industry for decades. I guess, like, when did you come up with the idea of, you know, doing lampooning the idea of a television network or streaming service mining its old intellectual property for a reboot? Yeah, I think the idea first uh, occurred to me when um, the Roseanne reboot kind of blew up when they had all their problems there. And I was working on Modern Family at the time, and I just remember thinking, well, that's the show I want to watch right now is what's going on at that soundstage. That must be a fascinating uh, thing going on there. And uh, and so, but I figured I wouldn't have time to, you know, to, to do it. Somebody else will think of this idea uh, before I'm done with, with uh, Modern Family. But Lo and behold, our show kind of wrapped, um, you know, in the next couple of years and nobody had done it. So during during uh, the pandemic, I just started uh, digging in. Did it come to you like pretty, it, it's so funny and so clever? Did it come to you like did it was writing it very easy? I guess it was like rolling downhill almost once you kind of got going. You would think so, but there are so many different ways to attack this. Um, you know, what, 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 whose point of view are we coming in, you know, uh, with, from, and, uh, so I, I had a lot of decisions to make and I went down some roads and spent time on those roads that didn't feel right ultimately. And I kept backing up and now maybe this is the better way in and then figuring out, you know, who the players were. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it didn't come as easily as one would think. Certainly, maybe not as, as easily as it feels watching it, which I think is probably a, a good compliment because it is very, it's a Thank good, you. it's a good watch. Uh, I want to ask you, you mentioned like kind of the characters. It's such an incredible ensemble. You have so many funny people in this cast. And I guess once you saw how uh, maybe they were interacting or bouncing off each other, did that change also the characters and how you were writing like them together? Because I just feel like they're, they're it's such a great group. But, you know, I wanted to see how it evolved maybe once you cast them. Yeah, it just, you know, it's a it's a funny thing. You 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 start casting the people who you think are right. And then, you know, you start uh you start uh, uh, morphing the characters and the and the actors together a little bit. You know, what is, so they they start changing based on what those actors can do and can bring to it. Um, but I think that uh um you know, it, it's just about finding people who are funny and who are, you know, inventive and um, who can mine the comedy out of uh, uh, sometimes a dramatic situation. Um, also, in some cases, it's about finding somebody like Paul Reiser, for example, who plays a character here that might in some ways be harder to love, but it's just harder, it's hard not to love Paul Reiser. So he, he buys you a lot of freedom for that character. You can push that character further if you want. Um, and the audience will still very much, uh, you know, be on board. When you, you Are you intentionally then looking for someone like Paul Reiser in that part so you can do that with the, the character? Or is it just like once you get Paul Reiser, like, oh, I can do this? Well, you're always searching for somebody like Paul Reiser. Uh, all, always. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, I, I mean, he, 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 you, you just, you're look, you're looking for that magic of that, you know, one plus one equals three, right. And an actor, a character, and then, oh, put those two things together and boom, they, they, they just jump off the page. You know, somebody like Johnny Knoxville was unconventional castings, you know, I guess, um, you know, for that role, you know, there were a lot of actors who could have been maybe, you know, thought of as more right for that role. But, you know, that was a character that had a dark side and had some danger to him. And I like the idea of that. It was a little bit scary casting Johnny for that, because I didn't know ultimately if he could do it. I, I thought he could, we talked you know, I know I knew he was charismatic. I knew he, um, you know, just brought a lot of stuff to it uh, inherently based on his whole history. But I didn't know if he could play the moments. And um, but it was that that was scary. And it just but it, it felt like a, a you know, a chance worth taking.
Yeah, he's really, really funny. I, the casting, I think, is just incredible, too, because whether or not, and maybe this was intentional, but I mean, you mentioned like Paul Reiser. I think people, and then there's also like Peter Gallagher as a guest for Lawrence Pressman. I love seeing. You have these actors who have like real, I think people who watch sitcoms or are familiar with sitcoms from like the 90s and 2000s have seen these actors and things and like are very familiar with them. And then putting them in this show about a 90s sitcom being rebooted, I just found that like you're really doing a lot of fun. Like the audience is kind of, you're, your your programming to the audience maybe that would be the most amenable to watching the show i guess i mean how 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 conscious of you were that when you're like oh lawrence Preston would be great for this as the director or whatever you know like that kind of stuff i really i really wasn't in in case like that i mean he just gave the funniest read on that character i mean just simply he was the funniest one but it it, it also you know i get a kick out of you know when paul reiser was talking about actors you know how they're like children and you know and and i just that's fun for him. it's fun for me to write that um you know for to have these this actor having to sort of um belittle actors uh um I, it and he got a, you know a real kick out of that too so it, 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 you know we're having fun with the you know people who have been in that position i mean you know rachel rachel bloom has been a showrunner um you know keegan michael key has been you know a major creative force on his shows so it's it's fun to you know for everybody to kind of be playing both sides of things. Yeah, it really, I think it adds to the uh, enjoyment too, knowing the backstory of the actors and watching them get to to do this. You also have an incredible, uh, my, I found the a lot of the writer's room scenes are just dead funny, so funny. Like, uh, and obviously you have the, the more maybe boomerish uh, older crowd who is not necessarily incredibly uh, woke in the show. And then the younger uh, millennials who are incredibly hypersensitive and aware of social constructs and the current uh the vibes, I guess. And I just found that so fun. I mean, how much of that like is stuff you've experienced? And then also how much of it is, are you just like kind of hearing like your friends talking? Like, how did you kind of do all those, uh, do those scenes and like kind of come up with like a lot of that? Well, I mean, I've experienced a lot of it. There's been a lot of, there have been a lot of debates over the years um, over what we're allowed to do and what's okay to do. And, um, you know, even amongst sometimes you know, a writer's room that you think is pretty much would be normally in sync, all of a sudden you realize that half the room feels one way about one thing and, and half feels the other. Or, you know, I have, I always I'm a, think of myself as a pretty progressive, uh, sensitive person. And um, I found my, I have found myself sometimes on the side of the, we're being way too politically correct here if we're not doing in this or, you know, why can't we have this character who sounds like this if it's funnier? You know, I, I and I found myself on the what would what some would be, you know, consider the non-PC side of that argument. I'm like, when did I get here? Um, so you know, then then it's what's delightful about th- those scenes is by discussing the boundaries. I think we can push the boundaries and we can get into some things that we normally wouldn't be able to, because you could have somebody bring something up and then somebody else, uh, you know, in the room says, no, we cannot do that. Well, why not? Because of this, because of that. And, and now you're talking about it and, you know, you can have people who are incredibly far over the politically correct line, as long as they're balanced out by people who are, um, uh, maybe a bit more woke. So right. it's a it's a fun thing. But then we found ourselves having debates even in our writer's room about a couple of things. Or, I mean, uh, there was an example in one of the episodes where a, one of the writers, young writers was saying, well, this thing doesn't exist in real life. And I was saying, yes, it does. I, I Yeah, it sure, of course it does. And then it uh, almost immediately went into the script, the exact conversation we were having. Yeah. So uh, uh, that that's it's a it's a joy to be able to, you know, play around and write about something I know so well. Yeah. I mean, I also think the other reason it works is because they're you're not punching down on either side. So I feel like it is like not an insult, I would say, to either faction. Right. I feel like it is. They're all coming. They're all like on the same level. And I don't feel like the show is making fun of either position. So I think that actually. helps. No, I, I, yeah. Thank you. I, I think that's the uh, it's that's the intent that there are valid arguments on both sides and uh, you, you know, that, that 
no one is an idiot for feeling a certain way about something, but, you know, we can learn from each other and we could hopefully still laugh at each other and with each other. Uh, and, and that these two, you know, very disparate groups can find some common ground through comedy. Maybe, maybe we all can. Yeah. And, and the shared humanity. I feel like they all also like, they're all people in the show, right? So it works out. Uh, yeah. 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 You Obviously, this is your first show since Modern Family, which is like a legendary, maybe like iconic uh, network show. This is a streaming show, 10 episodes. Uh, I'm watching, I was just like, I loved it so much. And I was like, oh man, I can't wait to watch more. I guess, how did you balance like, compared to like a season of Modern Family, where you're going to have like 25 episodes or whatever it is. How did you kind of like, how did you feel about that going from that kind of structure to a streaming show, I guess? Well, I'm getting old, so it felt pretty good to me that I was doing it. Eight. Oh, my God, the season's done already. We normally would be one third of the way in. Um, uh, you know, it it's it's a double edged sword because I I I do feel it, you can spend a little bit more time on the episodes and make sure you're getting them, you know, really right, hopefully. And um, it's it's not such a gigantic hill to climb. Uh, you know, at the beginning of the season, looking at 24, you know, versus eight um, or eight versus 24. Uh, but at the, the downside of it is, A, just from a writer's quality, actor's quality of life, you know, they would all love to be doing more. It'll make for a better, you know, easier sort of life for them. But from a, a creative standpoint, you know, you got to still get somewhere in a season like uh, on streaming. You have to tell a story in a way. And, you know, I think that had we had some more episodes, like the ending that we got to might have landed even more, you know, with with getting, you know, spending more time with these characters and, you know, not um, kind of racing through uh, a narrative. So, you know, it's, it's pluses and minuses. Yeah. Uh, you leave it off on a lot of uh, cliffhangers. Let's say I just, I'm like very, hopefully there is a, a season two, I guess. Or like, what have you thought about? Like, I'm sure you have, like, have you thought about and mapped out like season two and beyond? Yeah. 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 We, uh, we are waiting for, uh, we hope is a pickup. Um, but they gave us permission to start a writer's room. So we have been discussing, um, you know, uh, where to go and, and I, you know, there were a lot of, yeah, like you said, there were a lot of balls left in the air at the end of that season. So it was really fun kind of getting back into dealing with that. Yeah, for sure. I can't wait. Hopefully we get to see how it all plays out because the show is great. Uh, reboot on Hulu, Steve Levitan. Thank you so much.